Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media, and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 91, and as we approach the elevator where we left off last time, a familiar foe is going to emerge from said elevator. You are so that little boy who ran off with Professor Crane. Yeah, that was me. A long time ago, though. Because of what you did, Master Greville was oh so angry, made everyone miserable, and it's so all your fault. But it's okay now, we didn't need Professor Crane anyway. I just so needed to be serious, just a little tiny bit to get XD-01's final adjustments. It's so perfect now, purification will so not work on it ever, I'm so amazed because I am so a genius. Oh, you want to see my XD-01? Oh, so sorry, that is so not possible, why? Because, oh serious face, I'm so going to defeat you little boy. Here I come. Oh, I'm glad that's over because it's difficult for me to sound that annoying for that long. Yikes. Cypher Admin, love Reyna for the second time. She's not a pushover this time by any means. She has a pretty decent team on her hands here. Gardevoir and Gorbis are her starting Pokemon. Both heavily rely on their special stats, and both of them have abnormally high special attack stats uh, specifically. So Gardevoir and Gorbis, they can do a lot of damage, uh, especially with water and psychic type moves. And I believe Gardevoir also has Thunderbolt, and Gorbis probably has Ice Beam, so... Uh, keep that um, in the back of your mind or the front of your mind uh, when fighting Lavrina here. Shadow Ball uh, with Crobat ends up knocking out Gor uh, not Corvus, Gardevoir in one hit, which is kind of surprising, but uh, you do want to prey on that lower physical defense to get it off the field first um, because it can do the most damage and also uh, Crobat was weak to uh, the Psychic that was inevitably coming from that Gardevoir in this turn, so I wanted to get rid of it and it worked. Uh, Lavrina also likes to use uh, status moves. Um, much like last time, it will try to attract you and confuse you, paralyze you, all that stuff uh, to make you pretty much incapacitated while still being on the field. So the best thing I can say to do is to try to match genders uh, so that you cannot be attracted, but also uh, to attack quickly and attack hard. Uh, you want to go for one-hit KOs as much as possible here, and double teaming is the key uh, to remove specific Pokemon from the field. She also has two Shadow Pokemon in this battle, the first of which is coming out right now, and that's going to be Farfetch'd, the normal and flying-type Pokemon. It does not evolve, although this is another one of those Pokemon that I feel like uh, it should have earned a uh, evolution by now, because it just really isn't that good on its own. Unfortunately, we were seeded by Roselia's Leech Seed, so uh, we're going to need to take Roselia out next, uh, and then we will be able to go to work on Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd uh, does have Shadow Panic, and w it will use it. Um, usually within the first two turns, it will attempt to use Shadow Panic to confuse everyone on the field. Or, I guess it, it doesn't confuse everyone on the field. That would be Teeter Dance. Shadow Panic just confuses uh, both opponent Pokemon. I forgot about that, but it only has 60% accuracy, so that part can work in your favor sometimes. All right, our last Pokemon is another Shadow Pokemon, and it's going to be Altaria, the Dragon and Flying type evolution of Swablu from the Hoenn region. Uh, so uh, it's going to be four times weak to Ice type moves, so you want to stay away from that unless it's a very weak Ice type move. Altaria does have awesome special defense, so in a lot of cases it may even be able to survive an Ice attack, uh, but I would not take the chance, especially if it's a stab move. Um, what you can do is use rock type moves on it, uh, although uh, be warned that Altaria's physical defense is lower than its special defense, so just be careful. I do recommend putting it to sleep or paralyzing it. Uh, burn isn't necessarily the greatest idea, although it does have Shadow Break, uh, which is a physical shadow move, so uh, that could be useful, but I'd rather paralyze it because if it gets burned, it has the chance of dying, and Altaria's catch rate is really iffy. Sometimes um, I've had really good luck, and I've caught it in the first ball that I've used, and there's been other times where it's been down in the red and uh, with a status condition, and it just will not stay in an Ultra Ball, and I don't know why. Uh, so be a little bit on the careful side with this. Farfetch, not so much. Farfetch will be an easy capture. As uh, you can see there, Farfetch went for the Shadow Panic, and that didn't take very long. Uh, so you're going to have to pull out your Yellow Flute uh, if you do get hit by it. Um, and I'm going to use it on Zaprong in this turn so that I can get a Thunder Wave off 
And then if he goes for a Shadow Panic again, I'll do the same thing and do a Thunder Wave on Altaria in the next turn. That way we have them both paralyzed, and that's just going to make this battle so much easier to handle. Uh, these Pokemon aren't uh, particularly fast, um, but having them disabled or somewhat uh, disabled obviously is going to help us in the long run. It's also going to help us capture them, so it's a win-win. Farfetch does indeed go for the Shadow Panic again, and it hits again, which sucks. Uh, Vaporeon was already confused, obviously, so that doesn't really do anything uh, to Vaporeon, but Zaprong, unfortunately, is confused yet again. So, I'm thinking about what I want to do here, but I'm thinking I'm just going to use the uh, same tactic that I used last time. Go for the uh, Yellow Flute on Zaprong. Eh, we'll wait. Maybe I can capture Farfetch. I don't know what I want to do here. Very indecisive. Now, I think I'm just going to go for the uh, Yellow Flute. I thought maybe I could capture him, but I'm going to wait on that. I'll use it with um, Zaprong's turn. That'll make things a little bit easier. So Yellow Flute with Vaporeon's turn on Zaprong, and then uh, we'll use the Ultra Ball to capture Farfetch on Zaprong's turn instead of paralyzing Altaria this turn. Farfetch should stay in there, which he does. So now he's off the field and no more confusion for us, which is good news. Now he can deal with Altaria uh, alone. And for some reason, it keeps using Shadow Mist to lower our evasiveness, even though the only Shadow moves that it knows have 100% accuracy. So it's pretty much just wasting its time here because I'm not trying to use Double Team or Sand Attack or anything, so I don't know what it's doing here. We'll use Yellow Flute again to snap Vaporeon out of its confusion, and then we'll paralyze Altaria, and we'll go from there. And we should be able to inflict some small damage with Bite or something of that nature, uh, and get it down into at least the Yellow. Altaria is now going to go for the Shadow Break move, which I believe has the same power as Brick Break, so it would be 75 power. And as you can see, that really didn't do a whole lot of damage, but... Altaria isn't an attacking powerhouse by any means, so we'll go for a bite with uh, Vaporeon, and I think I'm just going to waste uh, Electabuzz's turn. I would rather have this take a little bit longer, and you're going to see that throughout the rest of... Oh, critical hit. Good thing I did that. Uh, you're going to see uh, this strategy throughout the rest of Citadel Dark Isle, where I will purposely waste turns and um, just to be safe, because you never know when you're going to get a critical hit, and... Having to reset after having, uh, you know, captured however many Shadow Pokemon in a row, plus uh, whoever knows how many uh, battles you've done since you've last saved it, um, it can get kind of iffy if you end up um, being reckless. So I'm going to try to play it on the safe side for the most part. Of course, I will take my risks, but anyway, that's going to do it for Cypher Admin Love Rena. Uh, for the second time, we've seen the end of her. She's she's done. Oh, you're terrible. I mean, really, Master Grievel will be oh so cross with me again. Oh, how I so dislike you. I'll be glad, little boy, when Master Grievel punishes you. Okay, well, unfortunately, uh, we haven't even made it halfway to Master Grievel yet, so... Yes, don't get your hopes up. Well, the first thing that we need to do before going uh, down, I guess it'll be up the elevator, is to heal up, but I guess before we do that, I'm going to just place the uh, Shadow Pokemon that we just caught in the Purifying Chamber while I'm here. Why not? Notice that Farfetch is holding the item called Stick, uh, which increases Farfetch, uh, Farfetch's attack, and it only works when held by Farfetch, so don't try to give it to other Pokemon. As for Altaria, it's holding the Dragon Fang, which is the held item that increases the power of Dragon-type moves. And uh, I'm going to put that in the Purifying Chamber as well. Now we can heal up our Pokemon. I very well may take that Dragon Fang off of Altaria soon-ish to uh, give it to Vibrava, who also will be evolving soon. He evolves to level 45, and I believe in the last episode he grew up to level 44. So in the next couple of episodes he should be evolving. We can possibly give him the Dragon Fang. We'll see about that, though. All right, let's take this elevator because it feels like we've been in this room for an exceptionally long amount of time. So we're going to take it down to the next level, or I guess this basement level. And let's see. 
I can switch Crobat out because I have a bunch of Pokemon at level 44. So we'll do that. We'll keep Vaporeon out in the front, though. Okay, so as we enter through the door here, we get attacked. A little guy like you shouldn't be in here. And battle time. Slifer Peon Bastille. Bastille, that's an awesome name. I say that in pretty much every battle, but the names are just so weird. Crobat and Saviper are the starting Pokemon, so we're going with two poison types here. We have Vaporeon and Ninetales to start out with, so uh, we will have the uh, Ice Beam to use on Crobat. That should take it out very easily, and we'll go for a Flamethrower uh, with Ninetales on Saviper, which I'm not entirely sure if that'll knock it out in one hit. Hopefully, yep, it does. The Viper is not incredibly bulky, but it can be iffy sometimes. A lot of times, you know, they'll end up with just a small sliver of health left. That happens to me seemingly all the time. Chimeco is the replacement Pokemon. It is a pure psychic type. It also has the levitate ability. They do not use ground type moves on it. We've gone over that a bunch of times because uh, Chimeco is just a popular Pokemon in this game for whatever reason. Ice Beam with Vaporeon connects with Crobat. And down it goes. Unfortunately, we were not able to take it out before it pulled off an air cutter, but air cutter is kind of a crappy move, so not that bad. Moscarine is a replacement for Crobat, and uh, we've seen Moscarine a bunch of times as well. It does have the Intimidate ability, so if you're using uh, Pokemon that use physical type attacks, that part can kind of suck, but I'm not, so I'm not worried about it. Heat Wave is going to get rid of Moscarine in one hit. And it'll do a little bit of damage to Chi- oh, or a lot of bit of damage to Chimeco. I keep forgetting about the level difference. These Pokemon are still in the uh, mid-30s, with this Chimeco being at level 34. However, the levels of our uh, opponent's Pokemon is going to skyrocket very soon, and we will begin to see a very quick but gradual um, increase uh, as we continue battling our way through Citadark Isle, uh, until eventually they're at the same level that we are. I don't really need to heal after that. Uh, there are no other forced battles in here. Uh, you pretty much get to choose them uh, from here on out. Uh, most of these rooms here do not have any items in them or anything like that. There's just scientists. You can talk to them if you want, but they don't really say anything useful. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's open up this chest right here and we pick up five Ultra Balls, which will indeed come in handy because we will be using a ridiculous amount of uh, Ultra Balls in the coming episodes, uh, basically throughout the rest of the game. In order to get to the next floor, we will have to battle that guy by the elevator, but right now we're going to go to the left, and uh, you don't say anything useful, do you? Nope. And we can check this uh, item case and pick up three Hyper Potions, which is something else that uh, you can find some practical use for, which is unusual. Most of the time, Pokemon games tend to give you items that you have no use for. But I'm actually going to stop here, guys. In the next episode, we'll battle this guy by the elevator and continue on through Citadark Isle. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for episode number 92. Game on.